So in this video, we're going to discuss uh, something that happens every once in a while to uh, to certain customers where uh, the IIS process seems to either um, crash or the CPU goes into 100% or um, another example would be the memory uh, for IIS just seems to go crazy and doesn't come back down. And so this, this kind of steps us through some of the steps we'll use to troubleshoot this a little bit more. This can be a difficult thing to um, assess and figure out, but one of our best, uh, best things we can do is take a look at the active diagnostics tool that's built into uh, some of the later versions of SBM. Uh, the key with this active diagnostics thing is that you kind of have to have it all set up and running in the proper way before the issue starts uh, so we're capturing the correct data. So a couple things with that. Uh, first uh, you want to go into uh, configurator so we're going to talk about setting up the active diagnostics ahead of time so uh, this is probably something good to just have running uh, every day just in case you run into one of these problems. Um, if you find yourself having these IIS type problems repeatedly like once a week once a month things like that you might just set up uh, active diagnostics ahead of time just like we're going to talk about and that way we can capture what we need so first thing you want to do is go into uh, the configurator and you want to go into the configurator on the system that's running the common services component so if you have SBM split out into a bunch of different components on different servers uh, you want to find the one that where common services is running. Uh, it, where that is running, you will be able to f go down to, uh, you'll see the diagnostics uh, tab down here called active diagnostics. So the first thing you want to do uh, is, after you get to the right server, go to the manage services area here and just verify that active diagnostics is in fact running. Uh, you'll you'll see it down here, and if it's running, it'll be green. Uh, if you find that if you try to start it and it goes green for a second and then goes to red, or if it goes for green for a couple of seconds and then goes to red, uh, take a look at the, this KB doc. It's kind of beyond the scope of this, but uh, the number is uh, S140066. And take a look for that KB doc that discusses the common problems when active, di active diagnostics won't start. Uh, it's usually because there's a lock file that's on the file system and if we just uh, delete that it'll, it'll start up. Anyway, look at that KB doc and for more information on that. So with that said, make sure uh, the diagnostics is started and then when you go down here to the diagnostics tab uh, and then switch over to the active diagnostics. You don't need to mess with any of the top part here, that's fine. The one thing, or the, the settings that you want to change, you want to have this log activity and you want to have the CPU and memory counters set. Also, it's probably a good idea, uh, by default this active diagnostics database uh, maxes out at 500 megabytes. That's the default. So if you want you can extend this to um, if you do, you know, a thousand megabytes or two thousand megabytes. That'll be two gig. Um, that's you know pretty good size. So this database, it just rolls. So as older things fall off the back, uh, the the biggest biggest it'll ever get in this case is going to be two gig, and the old stuff just rolls off the off the backside. So. And then the other setting you'd probably want to do is the system one. I would slide the slider up to uh, to info, and that should do it. Now the key with this is all you want to do is click this apply runtime configuration. You don't need to restart SBM. You don't need to restart anything. If you just click this uh, apply button, uh, this that tells you oh it's going to empty this and hit OK. Your configuration is saved. Okay, so now it's running with the appropriate uh, settings. So you don't really 
well, you don't have to push this apply button down here at all. If you do push that, you'll get prompted to restart SPM, and it don't really you don't need to do that. So after I after I set that, what I usually do is go back into Manage Services and just verify that uh, the Active Diagnostic Service is still running. In this case, it's green, which is good. So now uh, we are behind the scenes capturing all the activity and the CPU and the memory, things like that, uh, for IIS. So what happens is, uh, the next time you experience this problem, and, and you can just keep this running, it's, it doesn't affect much of anything, uh, you can just keep this running until you see this problem again. Okay, so let's just say tomorrow morning at 9 in the morning, you have a problem where IIS either hung or was, you know, users couldn't log in you go in and you look at you look at task manager and you know you take a look at uh, your your performance tab maybe and this is CPUs pegged out or memories going nuts and you look at the processes and 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 the one you're gonna look for is the uh, one of these two w w3 wp exe if you see the CPU is you know pegged at hundred percent or memory is just crazy or these are just completely gone. Maybe uh, IIS just crashed and went away. What you want to do in that case is come into Configurator again and click the Collect Log Files button. What this is going to do is collect all the log files that we need, including the Active Diagnostics database, and you know save that somewhere. And what you'll want to do is is create a case with support, and um, then we can take a look at the the database that gets created uh, it, it's kind of a it's it's not for the faint of heart uh, it's, it's kind of something that we need to look at um, and we have some tools that we can kind of diagnose what was going on at the time so that's kind of our first step in trying to troubleshoot these uh, issues where IIS goes crazy and um, so when you create the support case uh, what you want to do is supply those log files uh, mention the symptoms and also mention the time it started. So let's say 9 a.m. on January 23rd. And also uh, put your time zone in there too. So if you're on the East Coast, say 9 East Coast time, because when we look at these logs, uh, we, we just need to convert for the time zone that it happened in. And that'll help us out. So Hopefully, hopefully this helps get us get us in the right direction. Uh, like I said, this active diagnosis thing it's it's fine to just have running ahead of time, and it's probably not bad to just set this on your system as you know right now, even before you have any problems, just in case you would have a problem going forward. So hopefully that helps, and uh, that's all for this session.